All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into the week. I hope you're doing well. It's a holiday here in the United States. So some of you may not be seeing this at 7 a.m. on Eastern time sometime. <laughs> not right away anyway, but let's get into it. This week is going to be interesting. We do have a Pisces uh, full moon going on later this week. We also have Mercury going retrograde later this week. Uh, last night, I did a For Whoever reading that talked about um, understanding your, your intuitive sense versus fear. So if you want to check that out, there's a link for that. But today, I kind of want to carry on from that reading, and I want to look at what is your intuition trying to say to you right now so we can get a better sense. So go back and watch that video and then come back here uh, because I'm going to look in the extended today. I will pull signs for every zodiac sign get a sense of what your intuition is trying to say to you and narrow it down for each zodiac sign. Okay, so let's do this reading first about that intuition. What is intuition trying to say to me? What is my intuition trying to say to me right now? Voyage of the heart, that it's about feelings, not about thinking. All right, we talked about that in that reading last night. Transformation, Scorpio energy, big changes are coming. Um, and I, that could be instilling fear in some of you and really uh, understanding what the transformation is without getting freaked out about it is kind of being asked of you here. Journey by moonlight, right? Believe in magic. Um, Mercury uh, is ruling planet of Virgo and Mercury is also uh, Gemini energy. It's the magician. All right. Mercury is the magician uh, in the Zodiac or sorry, in the uh, major arcana. And it is about manifesting the kind of transformation in a more clear way. How can I say this to you? Um, when you're looking through the energy or the uh, language of your heart, the transformation is truly magical. Okay. And that's what's being showing up here right now for this, this interesting, really interesting week of um, you can, you can be for some of you it can be feeling kind of murky. If you have a lot of air, as your major planets in your birth chart. Um, if you don't know about your birth chart, I do teach a class. So I'm going to put another link there because some of you uh, are focusing solely on your sun sign. And that's not really the whole picture at all. Not even close. It's, you know, it's the basic way we walk into astrology, but it's, it's only a little piece of the puzzle. So I want to help you understand that too. Understand yourself. The chariot is underneath. I do. I keep seeing this king of cups here. There's a five of swords. There's a tower. And then there's the Virgo energy here. So sometimes the bottom of the deck speaks to me. And I feel like some of you are, it's possible that you're thinking that someone's trying to take advantage of you. Um, for some of you, it was a person took advantage of you because of your good heart, because of your desire to have love in your life. And then that's caused you to question uh, your picker. How am I, who am I picking and how am I picking it can be very driven by a lot of subconscious behaviors or past behaviors that were painful, like to avoid pain. I'm going to be, I'm going to be choosing uh, a person, but I feel like what happens actually is because if your subconscious is driving that show, then you're not really conscious of the reasons why you're choosing a person. This is about them coming to light. The tower breaking through in terms of creating wisdom for you. So you can see more about like, oh, wow, this person looked so cool and normal, but turns out they're like a narcissist or turns out they're somebody toxic or trying to get one over on me or trying to uh, take advantage of me. Um, Whatever you're, th or being someone who thinks, oh, this person's lovely and really they're toxic. Like, let's get to the bottom of how we're identifying and what are our biases, our unconscious biases that are driving our decisions versus let's get into wisdom. All right, let's see what we've been doing and then maybe become more wise because of it. Wow, Hierophant showing up here. Hmm. I don't know what's wrong with my forehead right now. <laughs> um, the sun just feels... It feels a little prickly right now. Hierophant, the sun, and the king of pentacles. Very beautiful energy here. Knight of wands, king of swords, ten of swords. Seven of pentacles, two of pentacles, five of pentacles. 
Wow. All right. So these are like opposites, right? This is opposite, like King of Pentacles, flush with money, Five of Pentacles, no money. So some of you could be doing very well and still feeling like there's a scarcity mentality. If there's, if there's abundance around, there's scarcity around. You will likely attract people who are have scarcity mentality when you have a lot of abundance you will likely attract the other side of that especially this can be a very unconscious thing that when things get good you're like okay when's the other shoe gonna drop okay that's that whole thing of abundance showing up and scarcity showing up at the same time so this is a lesson being learned here i feel like some of you are in this place of hierophant and sun feeling very confident, feeling very good, uh, thinking things are going really well, but then having this scarcity mentality come in and go, oh, when is it going to fall apart? When is all the work that I put in place going to fall apart? And some of you could project that on other people that, you know, there's somebody around me who wants to hurt me or there's somebody around me who's going to take it all away or who is behaving in such a way that is negative to my abundance, right? And so some of you also may be attracting in people who have scarcity mentality, and that is harshing on your uh, ability to manifest abundance. It's just about seeing things more clearly, seeing things um, that certain people that you attract in, are they what they seem? Okay, are they what they seem? Some of you have a, a connection with a person you are very abundant, but that person is not. They're very scarcity mentality. And so what happens is you try to balance these things and then things do kind of fall apart because you're bringing in the energy of lower vibration. Um, I think this is being shown to you not because this is necessarily happening right now. This is a pattern that has been happening and now you can act on it from a positive placement. You can act on it and going, oh, I see scarcity and, and, um, and abundance are two sides of the same coin, literally. And when I allow for myself to go down this road, meaning some of it, some of you could have it be represented as a person that shows up in your life that is um, kind of dragging you down or bringing you into the place of your own scarcity mentality. Because they're trying to be like, hey, you need to be more grounded. OK, the, the Hierophant and the uh, even, the, you know, the Virgo energy, the Taurus energy and hey, you need to be more grounded or hey, you're not doing it right or something like that. And it just is like, well, I've been having a lot of success with what I've been doing. Why are we trying to turn it into something that it's not? Why are we trying to take direction from someone who hasn't done it, who hasn't been successful necessarily, either in love or in abundance? Why are we taking advice? So um, I, I teach this spiritual business class and we're going to do that this fall, later, maybe in the winter time. We'll see. Um, but we talk about, I, I talk a lot about people's why and why they do things, okay? And you need to have a powerful why to get up and do, a, do your work every single day. It really needs to resonate with who you're becoming and what you're becoming. And that does create abundance. But when your why is about something negative, that can bring in and attract negative impact. So if you're doing something to hurt another person, then that is karmically out of balance, karmically... Uh, attracting uh, um, lack mentality or attracting uh, an actual lack of abundance, right? If the intuition or if the uh, intention is about shining your light, spreading positivity and things like that, that has a different impact. So it can be, I do feel like there's a little bit of vulnerability here about, you know, we have Pisces uh, in the full moon, we have Mercury in retrograde, Mercury in retrograde can be about, am I seeing this right? Am I, you know, am I seeing this person clearly, King of Swords? Am I seeing them for, you know, what I hope they are? Or do I see them for who they actually are? So it, let's talk about love for a second here. I feel like some of you are really shining your light beautifully. 
you're ready, you're grounded, you're capable, you're abundant, you're in this space of wanting to attract love. And yet we're not seeing people clearly. King of Swords and Knight of Wands in many ways are opposite energy. King of Swords is somebody is a tell them what they see them. <laughs> no, that's not right. Um, you know, what you see is what you get is the King of Swords. And the Knight of Wands is not at all what you see what you get. The Knight of Wands is very fantasy driven. The Knight of Wands can be, um, you know, goes this direction one day and that direction another day. Not very grounded at all. And the King of Swords is super reliable. So, uh, and also the King of Pentacles, we have the King of Wands here. So you may be seeing things that are not reliable, as reliable, and then you end up getting hurt by them. Ten of Swords and Five of Pentacles. So this is really about creating a, creating something new, putting time and effort into creating something new that is what it seems to be, that is King of Pentacles, that is stable and has structure to it. Okay, there is a, a, a desire here or a need here to create something on a firm foundation, not on something that can be blown apart at any moment in time, right? Like when something is a fantasy, hey, fantasy is the way we manifest. But when something is not built on a firm foundation, I always think of, <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you this story because a lot of you on my Thursday lives know this story, the underwear gnomes. <laughs> so uh, South Park gets it right so many times, I can't tell you. So uh, there's a storyline in, this is an old, old episode of, um, look it up, of South Park, the underwear gnomes. Cartman sees the underwear gnomes coming into his room, stealing his underwear every night. And his friends think he's crazy. His friends think he's hallucinating, right? That he's not, he's not really seeing things. And so he invites them to come and stay in the room. And there they are. There's the underwear gnomes. And so the underwear gnomes. So is it is Cartman being um, having hallucinations or is he seeing this clearly? And then the underwear gnomes, here's what they do. It, so it, I talk about this in the spiritual business class because the underwear gnomes are like, this is what I want to do. Right. We're going to steal underwear. Why are we going to steal underwear? I don't know. Why are we going to steal underwear? Why are we going to steal underwear? Part two. Part two, what's, how do we make money? How do we make money at this? How do we, no idea. But part three, make money. So there's this illusion that they're telling themselves, okay, this is our business plan. Steal underwear. Great. What's step two? Step two. I don't know what step two, step two. I don't know what step two is. Step three, make money. So there's a whole big part of that business plan that's missing. And a lot of uh, what I hear sometimes about creating wealth or stability or long-term um, structure for yourself that does generate financial stability, does generate love, uh, is rooted in something that isn't real, that is um, it, that isn't, that is a uh, kind of a made up thing that doesn't really give you what you want. But it's because I've believed this all my life. I've believed in this fairy godmother thing. Um, I've believed in it all my life. So I get really super disappointed when I apply that to people uh, without really seeing them. I think this is about really seeing people. It's about really seeing, hey, if I want to create some stability for myself, this is my business plan. And a lot of times you really do have to know what step two is. <laughs> you have to know what step two is in order to have some success. It can't just be this like, I want to, all right, so this one uh, person a long time ago said to me that they wanted to be, they wanted to have a business where they bring um, twin flames into union. I was like, great, have you done that? And they're like, oh no, I haven't done it. Well then how are you gonna do that for other people if you haven't done that for yourself or you haven't had experience doing, it? like what's your program, what's your thing? And then they started being like, oh, I see. Like, yes, I want to do a thing. Yes, I want to have love. Yes, I want to have King of Pentacles stability. Yes, I want to do all these things. But like, what's the mechanism? So this week, as we're having Mercury in retrograde, okay, and we're having Pisces in the full moon, Pisces is a very dreamy energy. And Mercury in retrograde can be a, a lot about a lack of clarity or... Um, thinking things are a certain way when they're really not. So you can see there's, there's this murky feeling to it. And I think we attribute certain people to have certain qualities 
and yet they may not. We may be attracting people in who are really uh, people who don't want commitment. Knight of Wands is pretty famous for not wanting to commitment, but yet they look like the King of Swords to us. And then we get, suddenly we get blindsided by the fact that, oh my God, they won't commit. Right? We are looking at something that we've invested a lot of time into, but still doesn't bring abundance because we're not really understanding what step two is. Step one, steal underwear. Step two, what's step two? I don't know what step two. I don't know what step two is. Step three, make money. We're not focusing enough on step two. When you steal the underwear, then what happens? And I think that that's, that can happen in a romantic relationship where we have someone that comes across looking a certain way to us, but then we don't have any mechanism to create an actual stable relationship. We don't have any mechanism. We love living in this fantasy piece of it. And we need to create a mechanism that doesn't harm us, that doesn't, isn't the opposite of what we want to create. And that takes effort to create a relationship that isn't built on an assumption about who someone is based on external trappings. Okay. We need to dig deeper. And that's what this is being asked of us. Dig deeper. Because the transformation is trying to happen. Love is trying to come in. Abundance are trying to come in. But if we're manifesting based on, and I hate to say a fantasy because I do think that, um, Part of manifesting is about being in this energy of, isn't it cool? Wouldn't it be cool if, right? Fantasy is a big part of manifesting. I think this has to do with the Virgo time period, which is an, okay, then how do we nail that down? How do we make that real? How do we make it real? So I'm going to pull, I'm going to do a different kind of extended today. I'm going to pull cards for each Zodiac sign and ask about what your intuition is trying to tell you right now. Okay. Okay. Link is below if you want to continue on for that. If you're part of Pathfinders, we're just going to keep going here. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos. <laughs>